Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're here to talk about the Chibuya arc episode and we're talking about bringing out the zombies part two. <laughs> and as always, I have here with me Ro. Howdy, howdy. And Ramon. Hey guys. And guys, I can't wait to talk about this episode because this episode had a locust in it and that <laughs> locust has gotten more attention than the locust from A Bug's Life. Ramon, what did you think about the the locust or in general uh, the episode? <laughs> oh, locust. It's funny, man, because you didn't want to do this episode, and I know like we we, we talked about like reasons why, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I I man, I liked it overall, but I, as I stated like when we were talking about it ahead of time, I was like, I really liked it, but I think I did like it obviously with everything going on in the subway with Gojo. Um, I think just seeing kind of to what level. Um, are these special curses and ghetto like taking this whole thing right where they're kind of putting like a lot of human life at risk and using it as kind of like pawns and, and part of the whole like how to make gojo snap i think it's beautiful like anytime you mess with like the human condition and then you have people with crazy powers you can't beat it <laughs> but yes uh <laughs> the locusts and <laughs> we'll talk about it when we get yeah. there right well I, it's it's, yeah. it's the internet, man. The internet kind of got <laughs> to me, but uh, I do think it was a great episode with a lot of like little details that I can't wait to talk about. But bro, what did you think about it? Um, I I liked it. I, I th- this is kind of my my issue doing uh anime episode or like anime shows week to week is that you you want to watch like the big chunks. Mm-hmm. But you can't. You gotta do like the small little pieces that you get every week. So it's the same issue that we had previously with with Jujutsu Kaisen, and that that I had with My Hero, and that I've had with Bleach, and, and that's why I hate catching up to shows because then I'm we tweak. So I want to enjoy one piece as long as I can because I yeah. can watch multiple episodes. You can time. binge it for months and years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing I like about talking episode by episode is that it forces me to learn more things that I normally would just kind of be like, ah, this is, this really didn't matter. So, like, I think the fact that we're talking about it, like, it made me, like, actually write notes and I have questions for you guys. You know, one of the first things I want to talk about, because the way that the, the episode starts is you see a lot of people in Halloween costumes, which I think you kind of been seeing in the last episode, too. But I think they were doing, like, homages to certain things. Like, I saw a guy that was wearing the One Piece law hat. Um, I saw... Maybe somebody potentially being dressed as like Buggy the Clown. I think later on I saw somebody dressed as Android 19 or 18. I forget which one. And then the Locust kind of reminded me a little bit of Cell from Dragon Ball. So I'm like, you know, clearly <laughs> the, the, the Locust was already in the in the manga. But I feel like still they just the sign of it. It kind of like, again, it brought me a little bit of a reminder of Cell. And obviously we saw from like the first episode that Jujutsu Kaisen likes to give homages to like Evangelion you know, to Gurren Laga. And so I'm like, I wonder if that was like purposely again. And again, that's me just kind of looking at the people to see if I saw any spotted any like cool, interesting costumes. <laughs> but the I like that. Question, I should yeah. have. The real question is, where's Waldo? Oh, I was <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that was the easiest one. I was like, <laughs> oh, he's right there. He's right there, right in front, right in front. Somebody should be like, oh, what, you dressed as Waldo this year? He's like, no, I'm from, uh, I'm dressed as Jujutsu Kaisen Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a victim I'm of the Shibuya character Shibuya from the Shibuya yeah, arc in Jujutsu Kaisen. Hey, I like that, though. That's kind of that's kind of cool. I might take that idea. Not, not that, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no. I, I, I didn't even think about uh, trying to look for other characters. But it, it totally makes sense because uh, Jujutsu Kaisen has made like these references to like Digimon and these other animes. And, it, man. And, so yeah, some of these like newer animes definitely do pay homage to some of the older ones from whether they be Dragon Ball, One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, whatever it is. So well, well another just sense. quick reference, and I promise I'll stop. But you know when when Gojo's like coming down into like you know the main floor, the way he's floating down, that kind of reminded me a little bit of Evangel- Evangelion, Ramon, with the uh, Ko- Kowaro, which is the angel, yeah, the the the, the, the angel, um. You know, the the other pilot, the other Ava potential pilot that's actually an angel. Like, just the way yeah. he also, there's that episode where he's trying to, like, go down to the very basement. He's just, like, floating slowly. Like, that's kind of what, what Gojo reminded me. It was just, like, Gojo was slowly just descending to the ground floor. So that was kind of cool it, for me, it's, too. It's, it's because... It, it, go- it, it reminded me of of Superman, like, when he goes <laughs> no, bad. No, no, okay. So, yes, it's because Gojo's the angel of death. So, just like in Evangelion, just like Superman... 
They're angels, mm. but boy, do they cause a lot of destruction <laughs> in the way. And because everybody wants them, um, people just, you know, they want to use humans and all kinds of other things as like bargaining tools, which is what this episode was all about. So just yeah. like Superman, just like everyone else, man, it's just, it's crazy. But I don't know. I like th- that the beginning was kind of funny, though, because you had Mei Mei, and I-, I assume that's her relative because they had it's that a really, weird, it's it's a they had that really weird joke <laughs> and they got really like awkward and even freaking it's dory caught on it he was just like staring at them like what the fuck <laughs> 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 yeah. my, my problem with the stupid show is that they have those words on so quickly <laughs> and and because they're they're talking plus like the, the you have the print so like I always have to pause and rewind or whatever. And if I'm watching on Funimation, it always takes a while to buffer or not buffer <laughs> for like the resolution to get there. I don't know what's the deal with Funimation, but yeah. Sure. So don't worry, you can rewatch it all when it comes in English, and then you'll get all the little subtle like hints of like weird perviness and awkward yeah. incestual jokes that they make. No, yeah, I they, get it, it took me a second to really figure out. But I mean, I like Mamie. I, I thought we were gonna see more of her right from the beginning. Yeah. I was not kind of happy when I, I I like that she gave it to Dory the choice of like what what curse. Like she was like, would you rather go against this like higher rank? curse i don't know if he was was he the grasshopper yeah he was special curse it's yeah. like yeah do you want to go against a special curse or do you want to go a bunch of bunch of like altered humans and she's like but i know you so you're probably going to go against a special well, curse well i don't know if you remember this but the reason why he didn't want to go about you know with those is because when he fought majito majito did the same thing he did some of those human and he doesn't like he doesn't like hurting Killing. them because of the fact that they used to be human so he has like a just a natural weakness towards like killing real people. So I could tell you he would have chosen that even regardless. if it wasn't for the reason. Yeah, regardless. He just didn't want to f- kill like, you know, real people, which I, I totally understand. Dude, and, and, and if you do remember from, remember from the beginning of the show, like his first big thing was that he wanted to give people like the, the a just death or like uh-huh. a deserving death or whatever. And then with those people, like he hates the, everything that happened and having to kill them. And I think he, he wanted was super to, like, guilty about it too. I think he was hoping Mahito would have been there because I think oh, that's yeah, like yeah. number one. Which he didn't even know his name. Which is mm-hmm. I think that was like that was kind of interesting too. Like he didn't even like he he recall hearing Mahito. Yeah, the dude with the scars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scarface. <laughs> patch, 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 patch face. Oh, patch, patch face. face. Yeah. <laughs> dude, so like I guess Meme's relative. His name is U- Ui Ui. Uh, funny name, but he was carrying, Ui, like, Ui. He get, he, in the beginning, he was carrying something, which later on, we, we find out it's a huge axe, which I'm trying to convince Ramon to do the thumbnail with the axe picture, because <laughs> dude, that axe, like, I want to see Mei fight with this axe, because this axe looked cool as hell. Like, it looked like some kind of, like, cursed weapon that does something really, really cool. Um, So I want to see that. Like, I, I try not to look at it. <laughs> I, th- oh. I think th- I think they showed us the wrong fight, man. I rather been watching Mei <laughs> destroying all those altered humans instead Nita of watching Dori. freaking Itadori and uh, Locus fighting it out. Like, I don't know. I, also, I didn't I didn't expect that to be like the curse that they were talking about when she's like, oh, like before you hit the next like you know uh, freaking veil, there will be like a special curse there that you, you know we're gonna fight. And then when I remember like when he first encountered it. I just did not think that was it. I just thought it was another random curse that, like, Ghetto summoned and that it was just supposed to... I mean, obviously, some, someone summoned it or, I mean, I forget who, like, created it or how they got there. But yeah. the whole point is, I didn't think that was it. So I was also really, like, kind of misled once he started fighting. I could not believe that that was, like, that that, that fight. And, yeah. and no. I don't know. Like, I guess they were trying to be funny with him, but I... I just was no, no. Well, 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 the thing was that... So the that's where the... The the barrier the barrier was was being formed so so they just assumed that there was going to be like a stronger curse and I think that they just sounds like a, a stronger energy but I I think it was the the other guy that was further down and that he just happened to run into the locust guy that was protecting the the little flower thing that was yeah. you think so Dude, yeah and I I think so it makes more sense. Dude, and from somebody that watches Dr. Stone and loves how Dr. Stone, like, explains a lot of the science stuff, like, this episode, when they were talking about the Locust and, like, the facts about the Locust, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I don't need this. I'm not watching the Discovery Channel, <laughs> like, especially about a Locust. Like, I didn't need to know about the tail, and, you know, I already kind of knew about them eating the way they do, but uh, maybe not the fact that they, like, it's, I don't know if it was, like, twice their weight or whatever, but I'm like, I just, I don't know. I don't know if this will save my life one day. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, but I see... <laughs> That, that's where that's where like the whole fight really threw me off, right? Because I liked that element 
but I don't think it did anything for the fight. Like it did nothing. It didn't. But like if if we all of a sudden realized that because he was a locust, Itadori was gonna do something specifically for locust, or you know, <laughs> like the locust kept on saying like how he was like, what does he say? He was like, Oh, I'm a smart guy, or I'm a smart guy. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's just like it fell off. Like they just it really didn't add anything to it besides I, educate I, some people on locusts. I, I don't know if it was trying to like hype up the locust or something or make it seem more bad, but I I don't think it worked. Okay, I mean, I, I, going... I forgot about all that backstory. <laughs> See? The like, dump. Going back to like my Dragon Ball, like he reminded me of Cell. Like if he had absorbed like a human or something and then he would have transformed like to be more human looking while still getting stronger, like that would have been cool because then I would have been like, yeah. that's 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 an exactly Dragon Ball C reference with Cell. But just the fact that even his tail, like I'm like, had his tail touched Itadori, what was it supposed to do? Because they didn't have like a like a needle a or, or anything. anything like, thing, yeah. I was so confused with that. No, it was gonna lay eggs. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was gonna really impregnate it. <laughs> Out. Which, again, like we're talking about, like story wise. I mean, not story wise, but like fight wise. It's because that's what they gave us. They gave us a fight with Itadori and a freaking locust. I never thought Itadori was gonna lose to the locust, so I don't even know why that was even necessary. But you know what? I didn't appreciate about the fight. I didn't like how fast they were moving during the fight. Like, I think it was kind of yeah. cool that that was supposed to be it, right? That maybe the locust, like, great special ability is that because they are so strong and they move so quick and they have this, like, you know, unsatisfiable, like, hunger, like, he was intense. Like, he was flying everywhere. He was breaking through stuff. But then the actual animation and when they're fighting, like, you weren't even seeing the real punches. You just kept on seeing blur. Like, there was this blurs, mm -hmm. blurs, blurs. And to me, like... I know where you're going for it because I can see the fight and I know what kind of like fight is supposed to be because it's like fast action, but it's just, it took away from it because all you saw was blur. It's like a blur. It's, it's so blurry, so quick. And I'm like, no, it just looks I th okay. I think <laughs> the problem is that like throughout all the episodes that I've seen of Jujutsu Kaisen, I've never seen one episode where I can say like, oh, the budget wasn't there or that just didn't <laughs> look good. So why did they even try? And this is the first time that I'm like, that just didn't look good. I don't know if it was supposed to be comical. I didn't get it or I wasn't laughing. So it just to me felt like, like I'm going to be thinking about this locust fight, not for the, <laughs> the right reasons, just as a, you know, like, remember that locust fight? It's not, it wasn't as bad as that locust fight. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere out there, someone else is going to fight some random bug, and we're going to be like, yeah, it's not any worse than that. <laughs> so. you, you know, Meme did an ability that I want to talk about real quick that kind of reminded me of Makima, and here I go again with my references to other anime, but she sent out the, she sent out the ravens, and she was able to, like, see through them. So that was kind of cool too, because I'm like, oh, I'm kind of getting an idea of what she can do, and like, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving like the way she looks. I really want to see somebody at her level fight, other than like Ghetto and Gojo. <laughs> but boy, didn't you mean Game of Thrones? Third Eye Raven, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, no, but also like cool. with, with Meme, she's only a, a first class sorcerer too. <laughs> Keep in mind. We well, you know what's funny? From uh, watching Rick and Morty, we found out that how smart crows are, which Ro has no knowledge of how smart crows can be. <laughs> no, I know, so, I, I know how smart they are. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, but not Rick and Morty smart. <laughs> not Rick and no, Morty smart. Not, not Rick and Morty smart. <laughs> we need, we need to show you their full, to, to, to we need, we need to show their few, full, full potential of crows, man. This is this, this way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, okay, so yeah, let's get past that freaking locust fight. Uh, you know what? Who I keep forgetting that even exists, and every time that I see him, I'm like, Who's this guy again? Was one of those like little baby triplet curses? Uh, what's his name? Moho. Um, yeah. Oh, Choso, I Choso. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, yeah. I forgot. I forgot about that whole story. But we already saw his two brothers die already. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it took a second to like for me too. Like being like, it's like, who is this dude? I'm like, I swear, like, <laughs> like obviously we've seen him before, but I feel like I just didn't know enough story. But you know, out of this whole like uh, episode, I guess we saw his abilities a little bit more, which I was actually pleasantly surprised that he has some really cool stuff that he does with blood. So his last, his other blood. brother had blood abilities too. I, all of them might have actually. So I don't know if it's like part of like whatever was the done to them. Cursed fetus thing yeah. that they were, yeah. You know, you know what's interesting? Some of the people that are caught in this um, bail that they can't leave, they're actually cursed users because some of them actually are able to see what's going around with them. And oh, somebody, like somebody of them pointed out like, oh, why is that man talking to that Those one two person, guys yeah. two guys? And he's like, oh, no, it's uh, it's four people. Four. But the reason why he's able to see that that guy is because he's actually like in a situation like Itadori, like that guy that you're, you're talking about, Ramon, 
people can see him. He's a real person. Like he, he can walk around and people will acknowledge him. He can walk through like, you know, doors. You can see him through cameras because I think they had somebody eat his embryo or whatever it was. Yeah. So then he became like a real per. Like he became, he took over like Itadori situation. He became that person. Um, yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting about, about that character for sure. That was one of those yeah. little details. I think, so yeah, that whole scene going into the subway was like really good. And I tell you, this is where the show really like gets good because you start seeing kind of like what their plan is like as, as, it's un, as it is unveiling. <laughs> you start seeing like Ghetto's plan, right? Ghetto and I guess Mahito, you could give him credit because he seems like another big player. And then you have the other like special grade curses that obviously are acting now the role and they're doing certain things. But I like the whole idea because once it came through the whole, the, the reason why they're in the subway and why they kidnapped all these people, like they sucked them into the subway. It's because they basically want to make Gojo overact and, and use his like purple ability or use any of his abilities because it seems like they're all pretty deadly to humans if they're like bystanders. Um, or, or, so or, I, or they want him not to use it because well, yeah. he, he would know that, that it would kill a ton of people. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So like they, they were like trying to like basically like cause him to really get that fueled and also they're getting away with it because at this point gojo's not reacting to any of it but i thought that was a beautiful detail because that's mm -hmm. literally most of the episode without talking about the moves they're doing without the fights it's legitimately them trying to basically push them to the edge and i just really like that tension because there's scenes where they're like you know killing some humans and he's like starting to like panic but he's thinking about it and he knows and i don't know i think it was just a very beautiful deadly like move that they did um and, yeah. and i don't know the end game yet besides like them trying to get gojo but it, it's a cool way of uh executing it for sure are, are they trying to kill gojo or or are they trying to capture him or what are they trying to do with gojo i think they mentioned in this episode that they're trying to capture him i think they mentioned when they were talking in the playground they mentioned the plan and i think the plan is to like entrap him and some kind of curse tool which, which goes back to like season one where they were talking in the restaurant so i think there is uh weapon or some kind of tool that can trap gojo and that's what they're trying to do to him i i, I know i know that they're trying to kill time and trying to keep him down there as long as possible but i don't know if it's because they're gonna get reinforcements or, or what's gonna happen yeah i mean that scene when they were talking in the playground man i thought that was a little <laughs> creepy because i wasn't sure and i'm still not sure if any of the kids that were like in the playground while this was happening this meeting took place like if any of them like really lived to you know, get out of that situation because I'm like, I don't know, man. Mahito is the kind of guy that will play with you for one second, and the next second he's just like doing, you know, crazy things to your body out of experimenting to you. And I don't know. And then the the volcano guy, I mean, just his presence alone can burn you off. So I'm like, yeah, uh, kind of like I felt. Well, I don't think I needed that. <laughs> he he's the one I worry about because he seems to be the most impulsive. Like when you first met him, he burned that whole restaurant to pieces. <laughs> like remember, like he just incinerated the whole restaurant that he was in. And, like, you know, throughout this, like, episode two, he's probably the one that's, like, actually hurting people the most. Um, yeah. He's the one that I was worried about. That that playground scene kind of did catch me off guard, too. Like, beautiful in a sense, right? Like, you have these crazy curses and guys who are, like, trying to just do whatever they're doing in a bad way. And then you have all these kids kind of played around. <laughs> and that's a nice little juxtaposition. <clears throat> Maybe maybe they meet up there in case they get caught. It's like we have collateral <laughs> damage, you know way of like people not attacking us but uh yeah man that whole situation hostages. i i do feel like gojo man especially since we saw the hidden inventory i feel like gojo in reality doesn't really care for like he cares to, like not hurt like real people but i feel like if you give him like a reason why it's okay for him to like have collateral damage and get you know accidentally kill some like normal people i feel like he's the kind of guy to take it um so it kind of surprises me that he's not willing to already go to that next that extra level just to get rid of all these curses at the same time I mean, part of that is just his confidence, right? Because I think there's a one time where they do, like, a move at him, doesn't flinch or anything, and then everything's just kind of, like, collapsing around him, and he's still, like, pretty smooth until he teleports out. So, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, part, part, of, part of it is that, because, like, if you remember Gojo from, like, the, you know, the flashback episodes, that's who we had, right? He We had someone that even, I guess, towards the end... Um, he was very much like kill him like why not but i think mm -hmm. he was still the one that was most impulsive to begin with so yeah i mean it's still in him um but maybe this is also showing about him how he's obviously trying to <laughs> somewhat resist and, and not kill these guys because you know he you, like you know he can't but he, he's kind of playing along with them so but it's just his confidence man i feel like he just thinks that nothing's going to happen to him which maybe might be his like the reason why they get him so we'll see 
Yeah. yeah I mean, well, still... the, the, that was also the case with with uh, with the other guy with uh, uh, Toji. Yeah. Or Toji or what was his name? Toji. Toji. Yeah. 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 We told you that that he he didn't think that there was a way for somebody to beat him, and then he was uh, obviously surprised. I I feel like they're really relying on that ghetto like review, like him coming into the situation and get and Gojo having no idea that he's been he's been alive. So I think they're really banking on that. Um, me as an audience, like that's what I'm waiting for at this point. Like, just bring in ghetto, let Gojo see ghetto, let me see that interaction, and see how this is gonna play out. So. I'm waiting for that, man. That's that's what's really gonna make me happy in the next couple episodes that we get a nice get and Gojo, you know, coming together. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, what's other noteworthy things that came out of that? I mean, like again, the ability from that guy Moho, whatever his name is, that that one thing, like with the yeah. blood, that was kind of cool. That was different. It was fun seeing freaking the the volcano guy and the earth or the curse also too, like trying to attack, do double attack together. That was kind of cute little try. Like I don't know, I was just I, I guess I was just liking all the efforts, everything they were trying to do to push him. I, I my favorite scene was like when uh freaking Jogo, like the or the volcano dude, like yeah. freaking sticks his hand and impales that one human, and then he's like, not even this is pissing you off, basically, and then he just like lights the freaking hand on fire. I'm just like, dude, so ruthless. Dude, do yeah. you think they'll change in the way they look? Like, do you think there's any way these curses can get a little bit more menacing and? they can evolve in a way because, um, you know, I'm thinking about like selling toys. Like, okay, I've seen the volcano guy. I've seen the, <laughs> I've seen the earth one. Now let me make them look a little bit more menacing or different so that I can sell more toys, especially the earth one. That one kind of bothers me because you know, it's a, it's oh, a woman, one, like it's no. mother earth. And the fact that it's just like, dude, it looks like it's not when I see her, like, I don't think mother, earth. I think of, uh, you know, just like, I don't know what I think of. If I'm being honest. Black but, trap. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. So it's just like, I would love to see, that character being represented more in a feminine figure just because to match the voice, you know, the voice and the the fact that it's just like, she looks again, like a, just like a, like a creature, you know, like a well, nasty, she had, ugly. She yeah. had her one flower special ability, like towards the end where she is like decayed everything. Remember in the, in that forest. Yeah. She reminds me of a character from like Guillermo del Toro from like Pan's Labyrinth. Mm-hmm. Like all those kind of creations, the weird, creepy, like dudes. So, yeah. Um, I, I, I just don't want to believe that this is it. Like, these are the guys. <laughs> Especially when the volcano guy looks like the silliest one of them all. You know, like, that guy really needs a... He needs to go or get a makeover. <laughs> well, you know, he's so, strong. So, it's just, yeah. yeah. So, so from from what I heard, though, like, th- this isn't going to be it. Like, th- this this isn't going to be, like, everyone that's fighting against the sorcerers. There's going to be more. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, you still I, got I, that. I, 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 I don't want to give any spoilers, but... And I haven't seen it, but it, there's going to be more. There's going to be a bigger. It, the fight's going to get bigger. And I'm surprised and somebody told you these spoilers because you're like the guy that doesn't want to hear it, doesn't want to know. know. Like, so. Jose, I'll, I'll say who it was. <laughs> yeah. He just kind of brings up things, and he get, he gave me a really bad spoiler for my he hero. Tied that, he tied that, you that, up and that, opened your ears. Yeah, <laughs> and it made it like not, I was watching my hero today with with my son. And yeah. it like no lie, I almost wanted to cry. Yeah, I mean, who the hasn't been there? That he gave me that made me super sad. I mean, who hasn't been there during pillow talk where you just say things that you shouldn't have said to the <laughs> to the other to the other person? <laughs> I mean, there, there's tons of times you guys are talking spoilers, but I just kind of phase them out. But I, I don't think I've ever encountered a spoiler that truly ruins something, or like I've been like so like defeated that I'm like, why even watch this anymore? But that's good though. I'll just keep like ignoring people so it's all good yeah no i mean i'm looking through myself man and i think we did touch on a lot of this um the one thing that i kind of i guess this is just like a very low-key thing but you know they have these assistants man and they're like you know they're not strong enough to be like i don't don't get them like i don't get them neither because they can do things and it's almost like they were maybe trying to be jujutsu sorcerers but they were not at that level so then they chose this career pad and i don't know if the benefits are good i don't know if it pays well I don't know if, they, but it's like they like in this I, episode we find out we found out two of them got taken out because they were sent in and it's like, dude, are you like this sounds like irresponsible for you to be sending these assistants um, <laughs> to do any of this? <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I, I really have no answer for that in a sense of like every time, especially like the main guy that was kind of like babysitting Itadori in the beginning too. 
like I feel like at least with him, like he was active and we saw him more. So we kind of know what role it is. But like you said, it's very hands off. Like even the second that anyone starts fighting and stuff like that, they just kind of go and like they get on the phone, call for reinforcement. So they seem like definitely like assistants and very organized and stuff. But yeah, I don't like in the situations like that, it's definitely like why even have them there if they're going to be like a risk or someone that you got to worry about. Like as a sorcerer, like I would not want to worry about my one person that, you know, it's my handler or whatever, you know. Yeah, you know we don't we don't talk about it, but it could like this is kind of sort of like demon slayer. It's like does the government know that Jujutsu Kaisen exists and that this is like their thing to do? That's another thing that I always kind of like. I I want an acknowledgement that somebody knows what's really going on in the government. They're like, well, we just gotta leave it up to these guys because they they, they we shouldn't get involved. Like the government and church separation, like <laughs> let them handle it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well. well I feel like someone should know. Well, you could you, you have the the clans and the different families and or whatever, but there's there's kind of like a governing body within the sorcerer society. So I'm guessing somewhere up the line, there's some sort of connection okay. with something else. I would like assume. Demons, yeah, like demons. There, I feel like they know because it's like they even call them like the demon corpse. Hey, Carlos. Like, yeah, you still you still have the tag on your shirt. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just got this today. <laughs> So, so Carlos is so excited about his Naruto Hawaiian shirt. Let's go! I love it though. Hey, hey I'm jealous. I, I, I'm I'm going on a cruise, and I bought this shirt because I'm going to be representing my nerdy ass on a cruise. And I'm sure all the dads are in their 40s, 30s, gonna be like secretly telling me, like, "Dude, I love your shirt," but my wife wouldn't let me <laughs> wear that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it was on sales, only sixteen dollars at Kohl's. Oh, dang! I approve. <laughs> Dude. Let's go! Oh, hilarious! I will not be but editing yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I, 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 love it. It. I think I think I, everybody. Will... Yeah, because I want that Cole's money. <laughs> <laughs> and dad and I'm like, hey, everybody, like listening to us right now, like go check it out. Like you might want it too, especially if you like Naruto. Let's go. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I, but... I don't know if I'm a Hawaiian shirt type of guy though. Even though I do love Naruto. Dude, like you put it on, start talking about conspiracy theories about the governments and, and sorcerers, and you know, oh, yeah. just, and have a whole podcast <laughs> about it too. <laughs> have a whole podcast to work about to, it. Since I have the collar. There you yeah. go. Hey, <laughs> professional. Hey, man, but I mean, if we're done with this, I mean, it's yeah, a good episode again. Yeah. I, th- I, think, I think people. Probably were a little bit too negative on it because of the locust, but it was a, it was a good episode, man. I'm I'm happy I thought, with I, it. I thought I thought locust was kind of funny, honestly. <laughs> it's entertaining. And, yeah, and I I I think they're keeping the bar low because it's gonna ramp up. Well, yeah. I'm kind of hoping that's what's gonna happen. Absolutely, like bring it down, bring the people's expectations down. So the next episode is like holy bam, smokes, bam, yeah, bam, everybody's dead. And I love the fact that it comes out on Thursday because then I always Thursday comes and I don't expect it. And I'm like, oh shit! No, it's Thursday, like yeah. it's, it's Jujutsu Kaisen episode day, so I love that about it. Don't don't change that schedule. I, I was just happy that Itadori did something. And, and you know what? Actually, a good point that we didn't talk about is the fact that they're still mentioning that he's so good without having like a specialty so far. And I yeah. think that's gonna be huge too. Like I don't know if that happens in this arc where he's gonna like learn some crazy ability or maybe he never has an ability like i don't know you guys tell me but like i don't know this is cool that like, he's so pretty I, strong like i, I, I mean forget in, that he is i mean in the trailer i saw him do an arrow like this so maybe we got uh, an ichida uh, in, 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 <laughs> a little bit of an ichida in him and Damn, that's but, my that's my bleach transition <laughs> so he's a quincy zombie because apparently that's a thing <laughs> oh uh, man well let's let's move to uh the bleach, the bleach. um uh, marching out the zombies part two man and i was um mm-hmm. man dude i was all in for the beginning of this episode man and then not that it lost me but i'm like oh you had me you had me i thought it was gonna be like a really great one um because of the fact that toshiro shows up and just really quick i want to say that it's so cool to see when a good guy all of a sudden becomes like it's either an evil person or being controlled in a way where he's actually able to use his abilities where they're not able to normally use them like in a cool way because i think throughout this whole season i've been saying like dude they just never do anything cool with his abilities like they never do anything cool they never do anything cool in this episode we see what you can do if you don't care about people like about like not hurting well i don't know why he wouldn't care but it's just like the idea that he was just like freezing people slashing them and i'm like that's the culture that i've been wanting to see so that kind of was really cool to me 
No, that was definitely a plus of it. I, I, I definitely meant to bring that up as well um, during this is that I liked his like kind of redone persona because clearly he's not a good guy anymore, at least in this zombie state. And I think he's yeah. more ruthless. Like I, you, like oh, you said, cool. like he had definitely had a lot more aggressive attack. And then especially, I mean, obviously the scene with him and uh, Kurotsuchi, like that captain, like I just... That was beautiful too, because not not only because of what Kurosuchi was doing to him, <laughs> but just the ability of like him killing him multiple times, and you saw that every time was a little different. So I'm like, man, this guy really wants to kill him, and like obviously he's being thrown off because he's in a groundhog dog, a groundhog. So dog crazy. Anyways, what's yeah. yeah. I don't even want to know how that works for everybody that's not part of that. Like, how does the how does time move forward? Because he said it. He's like, as long as you don't it's kill me, like time, time will continue to go forward but, but how does that work for everybody else like i don't, I don't know dude, dude, I, I, I wonder i wonder so when i was when i was watching that moment or that that part of the show i was wondering if that's what he did during the the kenpachi fight with with the healing kenpachi lady i don't know what you're talking oh, about oh like because she kept on night dying and kenpachi kept on killing her and killing her and killing her oh no, 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 vice versa. Oh, she vice versa. Was, yeah, that's us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She kept killing Kampachi or defeating oh, that's true, that's true, and, then, and then and then he would like come to like all of a sudden again. But, so I, I, I wonder she, if he yeah. facilitated that happening. No, I think that was her banka, like the whole like bringing you back. Like the blood manipulation and healing, like you know, again, she was like a healer. She's like, I spent so much like learning how to heal and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's a good point. If anything, this reminded me more of like Itachi's fight with you know Sasuke, and they were fighting uh the um, what was his name uh, or Chimaro's sort of subordinate Kabuto. 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 They were fighting Kabuto. This whole idea that Kabuto always thought that he had gone them, but every time he would, oh. he would just revert <laughs> back to like you know and like. <laughs> He lived that okay. moment to the point where he was able to finally like let go of all of his anger and make himself like a forgive like forgive for whatever he had done or became like a that was the whole thing, right? Like once he forgave yeah. himself and he became a good guy, essentially he got released of the what is it like Gengetsu? Gengetsu. Gen Genjutsu. But yeah, that was way later too, man. He was in that shit forever. <laughs> like he was in there for a good while. He was in timeout for a good while. But no, I mean, yeah. I, I like I like this episode actually. Um, mm -hmm. I still think that it's still very bits and pieces, but at least the bits and pieces are at least kind of combining more because now you're seeing people that obviously had already died or been close to death, and and people are coming back. And you know, yes, of course, this is the episode of zombies because I feel like there was like three different type of zombies in this episode. Um, so I think that was kind of like entertaining at least. Because it was like, well, who has the stronger zombies? And like, no, I just took your zombies and I made them my zombies. And then freaking <laughs> Pepe, Pepe, Pepe shows up at the very end. Cupid. And I'm just like, oh my God. Dude, it reminded me of Pepe Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew, like from freaking Looney Tunes. Yeah. I'm like, there's the same freaking like characteristics too, where he's like so gross. <laughs> what a freaking dude. Except, except he, he looks like, uh, you, do you know who he, he reminds me of? Uh, who knows if you're going to know the reference from uh, uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? The, okay, the, the, the I know that you're talking about. Yeah, the, 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 the kid, kid that grew up. Yeah. yeah that, that grew up. That, he was a spokesman for the sardines or, or something. <laughs> yeah. He would go like this or something. And like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if he was old and still trying to do the same pose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his power was cool. This whole idea that he blows a kiss or whatever arrow and then all of a sudden he controls you. That what it was. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of cool. Bear. Power. And I like how he grabbed ba Bakuya's like sword because the soul the sword technically has a soul. So I'm like, oh, that was kind of cool too. I wish that would have yeah. been a little bit more done with that. Yeah, I yeah. don't know, man. We jumped all over the place so quick because there was a lot of little bits and pieces that were really yeah. good about this. Um, but no, like I don't know. I I, I think so because Toshiro, I think, was one of those things that I really liked again from the beginning. Um, that moment too, where he sliced that at Rancar's, like that Rancar rushes and he's like, Oh, is this who I'm supposed to fight now? Like, I already beat Bambi. Uh, is this the little man? And then he's like, <laughs> handsome too. And the next thing you know, he gets slashed. And it's just like, I don't know. I, I think again, that's like we were talking about earlier. Is this the moments that you realize that whoever was the strongest last episode is no longer the strongest this episode? Yeah. And that was really enjoyable right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the whole episode was that it was a battle of like who's better at zombifying people. <laughs> <laughs> which i don't no, know man. in your opinion who was the better one but no i mean again i like this whole idea of like a good guy toshiro all of a sudden being a bad guy and you know him just being like so powerful and deadly because i think he should always be like that he should always be a captain the moment he steps into the battlefield like you're fe you're fearful 
Um, I think that's the one thing, cool thing that One Piece does. Like they have these level lieutenants or vice or captains, um, like really high up the ranks where it's like, dude, like, like vice get away. Admirals, like the moment, admirals, yeah. yeah, the admirals, the moment they like step into the ground, like run away, like you cannot defeat an admiral no matter no. what you do. Um, which it ha- actually they have an admiral that does ice similar to Toshiro. And it's like, yeah, same level, man. Like really cool stuff. No, but he does an insane amount of ice. I mean, Tochiro could probably, like, again, because we saw him, like, he wasn't even using his Bankai. Mm-hmm. Just that slash alone created that much ice. And it's just something that we don't see him on the regular do. Um, mm-hmm. So I thought, I thought that was really cool, man. I don't know how, because I don't think, I think he'll be probably back to normal the next time we see him. Just from, again, that captain putting that thing the, and giving him so a cure. That, that's if he can uh, ever get back to normal, because... Is he like, dead? Or... He, well, he didn't I... die. He, he yeah, said yeah, it. yeah, because that, that, yeah, that, that was the only reason why he was able, still able to use his like sword and bond kind of stuff is because yeah. he was still alive. Like, like got she, him right before he died, right? That's what she said, or yeah. he said. Yeah, <laughs> that's what but, he said. It was like right before he's do, dead, then they'll keep some more agile. But I do think the other captains are dead. The other ones, like the other two that came no, into the picture. No, but he did his bankai too. The punching guy. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, he's dead, though, man. Because, I, I mean, remember when he fought Grammy, Grammy imagined that they're dead, or he, like, said, like, these guys are dead. Oh, yeah. so, I feel like, so I feel like Grammy was the one responsible for technically, they're like, dead. ending them. Yeah. And and so. I think people forgot about them, in a sense. So, I mean, besides, like, obviously, the, the Quincy's knowing where the, peop- the dead people were at. Like, yeah, yeah. I think, like, no, no one else from the freaking Soul Reapers knew that they were dead down there. Because who survived that fight? Kampachi, but he never saw them down in the basement or wherever they well, were. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, you got a point. Yeah, because they, they all went down with the, with the lieutenant girl. And yeah. then he, he was trying to find her after the the fight, but he couldn't find her. Because I, it's his bankai. According to I mean, I respect, I respect what he said, man, about like, hey, if I can use them and, you know, I don't care if they're dead. I mean, they can save, you know, soul society. Like, why not, man? Like, I'm all yeah, for they, it. Yeah. Yeah. Even oh, yeah. Because... Like, Oh, yeah, because uh, freaking What's-His-Face was trying to play that card of, like, you don't feel bad about doing, like, using him like this. And he had a good point. Like, they would want to continue fighting until they could, right? Once the yeah. war is done with, then, yeah, let them lay him to peace and let him, like, rest. But yeah. why not? I, I mean, you got a you gotta glimpse of why this technology captain is kind of maybe not somebody you would want to fight. Even because he might not be the strongest. Let's say this rank him. Let's say there's 10 of them. Let's say he falls like on the number seven on the rank. You just don't want to fight him, man, because all of a sudden he'll drug you. He'll do something like an experiment that you'll rather face Kampashi and be over in a second that this guy's going to make or, you suffer for infinity. <laughs> or, or, or he'll like trap you instead of like yeah. trying to. He'll, he'll, he'll defeat you by like trapping you or tricking he you. He did or, that before. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you're, you're trapped for like millennia being experimented on. But even then, I mean, obviously he seems pretty resourceful. He had his like uh, his like sword with uh, one sensor thing that he applied to it, that creepy like mm-hmm. snail looking thing. That was yeah. cool too, because when he first said it, he's like, "You'd be you're questioning yourself how I'm like able to stop you, even though I'm not having been in the field for a while." And I don't know, dude. Yeah, this mm-hmm. he he is pretty like. I think he's probably one of my favorites so far because he is so like that, like so inventive and he's always doing different things. Like everything dude, he does is different. Dude, I was going to take had the episode been solely focused on him. Like I was going to text you like, Ramon, you're really going to enjoy this episode because this captain, all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. I got a feeling you're going to relate to him with the whole him and his drugs and experimentation. I'm like, oh, this is like so Ramon's like, like thing. But uh, yeah. clearly like this episode kind of went into another different thing um sadly i wish again it would have been more focused on them that situation but yeah <laughs> it made the yeah. switch I, I i'm just a fan whenever the the nerd gets to like sh- show up and 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 be a badass as yep. as a fellow nerd <laughs> yep, that's why yeah. donatello is my favorite ninja turtle man their love no, all he's the way. my favorite ninja turtle no uh-uh. oh Spider-Man. man <laughs> well, I'm all, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Well, I always been a Leo fan, so I don't think you can take that from me. <laughs> nah, you're good. You can have you're Leo. Fine. You can have all the responsibility yeah. of a uh, whole family on your shoulders. Yeah. Um, it's all without good. the maturity to handle it. <laughs> nope. how, how, how did you like just Bakuga, like kind of taking care of all the other? You know, he was finding like multiple quinces, and I know it wasn't like yeah, know. crazy stuff happening, but like man, though, like again, that guy is super cool. Like, uh, if they gave the budget for him, just having like a fight with somebody that's also on his level you would really like everything that he how he can think like normally i think what i appreciate about him other than it's like pedals is just like he's always outsmarts opponents by thinking really quick like really quick on his feet 
Well, yeah. at least I. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'm saying at least I saw more of like his pedals being super strong because <laughs> just with the one move that he did, it was like they were all like knocked out, done. <laughs> I, I I think it's cool that 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 for him, like his subpacto and his bankai are the same thing, except his bankai is just an overpowered subpacto of him because it's just like a lot more of the pedals and and it's it's just deadlier. Which yeah, is cool. it's like. It's like a Gara situation, which I also feel yeah. like sometimes when you have that power, it does make you lazy, which I don't think he's lazy. I'm just saying like with Gara, like how stronger would Gara be if he could fight like Lee, like um bushy eyebrows? Like well, how much stronger if he had like not just the sand, but also could just fight on that level. But sadly, Gara, anytime you get a fight with him, it's always just him like standing still and letting the sand do everything. <laughs> so it kind of yeah. sucks. I feel like that's Gara's weakness. Well, if if you remember, also when 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 he was uh he was finding the fear uh guy, like yeah. he, oh, yeah. he even did the thing because uh he said like when was the last time that you got hurt or something like that or that that you felt fear because he's always been so powerful because he's always been like insanely fast and he's always been like super powerful with his subacto and everything. So then he was trying to use that against them, but it 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 was working but not working at the same time. So so it's funny because the last time we saw a really cool fight with him, Ramon, he fought a, uh, an Iran card that if he looked at you with his eyes and he looked at a specific part of you or whatever, like he could take control of it. So all of a sudden, like if he plays like a mark on your arm, he has control of that arm. And wow. I remember like when that would happen, like he would immediately cut his arm in a way where he couldn't move it. So his arm, his arm couldn't like hurt him. Uh, yeah, he was suffering like, he the, like the, the the ligaments, ligaments. Wow. So like in this yeah. one, he even said it. He's like, the moment my sword got you know lost control of it, I should have have destroyed it or done something for it. So it's like he's that kind of like level of thinking, like mm -hmm. like why mess around with it? Like I have no attachment to it. Like not that he doesn't have any attachment to it, but if it's not in my control, then I need to get rid of it like off the table like right away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because he did say that. So like either he should have destroyed it or just like got it under control a different way but like instead of just throwing it that was yeah. a cool detail I, I didn't care for that quincy though the the love one the um, the freaking <laughs> pepe pepe <laughs> yeah because I, I, I mean that's that's kind of where that led that whole situation ended up at and i and i didn't really care for him i don't think that's someone like dude even even the freaking old man that looks like a badass detective with his gray mustache and the gun oh like, my god that's a guy that i would have loved to see more of or at least him being justified instead of just being like a dude who's always like so like angry like a cranky old man but he never does anything but then to randomly bring in a pervy like freaking dude who's just trying to like grope everybody like that's i don't know but i, I don't know at least the um, yeah go ahead no, I said the head. You, you, you're right because I forgot about it. But the guy with the guns, like, dude, in the last season, he was fighting off the head commander. Right now, like, he took out his eye, and like, they made it seem like, oh, cool, he could do something really cool with his guns. And like, this one's just like totally made him feel like like a waste. Like he wasn't worthy of even fighting that other guy. So the idea that that guy lost his eye to him is kind of like pathetic. Huh? So yeah. I don't know. I mean, again, like. I do not. I don't know why that guy's head captain, man. <laughs> I am really questioning. Well, 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 he's he's strong, but they really haven't shown him be strong in in the, the dozen year blood war. No, it's like I don't know. I don't think they ever have, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Well, but but he's never done his bankai either because he can't. <laughs> yeah, his bankai is gonna be so weird. Like I don't understand yeah. it at all. Once we do see it. Yeah. Well, yeah, his his uh, his uh, subacto is already like complicated because of the rules that come but, with it. But that's cool. That one I do like yeah. a lot. This whole idea, yeah. like, so so like, so. Imagine his bankai. It's it's yeah. gonna be even crazier. Because he can do games. His his subacto is like games, Ramon. Like we're talking yeah. about the head captain here, the one that yeah. lost the eye with the the komodo that's all flowery. His yeah. subacto is like he plays games. Like he can be like. Okay, you're wearing black. I'm wearing white. So it's like every time, anytime I hit a uh, something with black, it's like twice as damage. So it's like oh, wow. he can do like he, he can all of a sudden implement like rules into the into the into the battle, and it's like a game. But they also work and, against and, and, him. He can change them kind of like as he's about to like strike. Oh, yeah. cool. so 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 for example, like uh, he'll he'll do like the the black and white thing, and then if if you're like under him. Then, then he'd be like, uh, only attacks from from above hit or whatever, and yeah. and, and strikes from below cause no damage, stuff like that. Yeah. So, so, so then you're trying to follow along, 
to like whatever the rules are and stuff. Yeah. It, it's, so it <laughs> that sounds super fun, actually. Why have, we, <laughs> why have we gotten more of that? That sounds so fun just mm-hmm. talking about it. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I mean, we'll see how this um you know this this arc like the, how the season's gonna end in general. I mean, we know that um you know the your favorite guy Ramon made it all the way to the Soul King's Palace. <laughs> your watch, uh, <laughs> your, your, your watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I even almost missed that like glimpse. I almost like, because I was rushing to like finish the episode, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, there's probably something at the end. And then I saw that. I'm like, okay, 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 there we go. We're somewhere. Yeah. We're the Soul Palace. Let's I go. mean, we know that the season's going to end on September 30th. It's going to be an hour long episode. So, I mean, they have to like wrap it up with something good to put a nice bow, to- bow tie to it so that people do crave bleach and want it to come back. Because if people talk about it and it's like the responses is like ah, it was okay i wouldn't care if it comes back and i like that's not what you want <laughs> so i think right now the response has been a very little bit like eh, and but i think fans honestly like true fans are still happy with it like i myself like i think if i was oh, just course, watching yeah. this like benching it i wouldn't have a problem with any of this man it was just me watching it at home <laughs> I mean, I do like the idea of you telling us that, you know, and this is for you guys listening, that, like, we are going to necessarily kind of take a break after we're done with Bleach. Um, And even though we love talking about Jujutsu Kaisen, like, week by week, it it is difficult, man. And it's not, like, difficult to talk about it because we love about it. Obviously, you guys can hear and and you guys, like, I always love talking about these details because we do anyways. But I do like the idea of, like, actually binging, like, a handful of episodes and then come back and just really be, like, I'll geek because like Raul said earlier, sometimes there is this that like build up that you don't get episode by episode until you're binging it. Because if you're watching it and week by week, it just it kills the momentum. It just kind of kills the vibe. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe I will rewatch this season of Bleach once it's done because I do want to feel like I felt the first season of the Thousand Year Blood War. Because I remember I binged that, and I was like, yeah, guys, I'm for it. Let's go. Let's talk Bleach. <laughs> yeah, you know, Ramon, you're always my little experiment person <laughs> that I like to do things with. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, like... I get, you're well, the test dummy. So, again, to okay, that point, that like... Better, you know, thank you. <laughs> so, so, not that we couldn't talk about these week by week, but it's just like, dude, we have so much stuff that we do want to talk about. Like, we want to talk about these yes. movies that we've seen, all these TV shows that we're currently watching. Even anime stuff, like um, one anime that's coming back that I didn't think was going to get a second season is like the the Goblin Slayer, I think, or Goblin Slayer. I think that's what it's called. Um, but anyways, I would love for you, Ramon, to just see the first episode. Like the first episode, come back next week. And Ramon, like in anticipation for the second season that's re- coming back on October 3rd, what did you think about this? goblin slayer like did you think this was a good anime that should have like based on just one episode and and i say the first episode ramon because the first episode got a lot of controversy and it's the one thing people always talk about with demon slayer so i would love for you to even watch demon slayer that first episode and um hopefully people don't judge me for putting that on you (laughs) what's the name of the show goblin what i think it's goblin slayer so goblin, goblin and then slayer you yeah. a demon slayer i was like wait what oh sorry, <laughs> no, sorry yeah. no, I, I could yeah, I, so. I could check that out yeah yeah i mean but about... i do agree though there's so many other things like that yeah yeah no and you know halloween's coming so it's like you know it's an opportunity for us to talk about like spooky things so that's always exciting hells yeah so yeah. It, it, if anyone has suggestions for any spooky things that they want us to talk about feel free to message us contact us go on the discord Whatever it is that, that you need and tell us because I know, I know I'm a big fan of zombies. I don't know about anything else you guys are into. No, no. Know, yeah. Man. I love my scary movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm the one that's like not very into scary movies, but, but I do like watching them. Uh, <laughs> you know, especially like if they're high quality, like you must see this. Um, but no, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for for us to be kind of like putting our feet in other things. So just so we can talk about those things. But um, is there anything you guys want to talk about before we get off of Bleach and Jujutsu Kaisen overall? Any final thoughts? Um, not on this, but <laughs> I have <laughs> yeah. other thoughts on something else that I just want to mention. Oh, what is it? Oh, at some point. I, so, so I forgot how awesome this part of my hero is. It's 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 when 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 they're going uh, to do the giant raid against the the hospital and the and the yeah. hideout, 
Like yeah, this over, part over, is amazing. Like Elias are you talking is super, about, my son's Are you talking about an over when they do the overhaul guy? Or are you talking about the newest, newest season they just no, aired? No, no, yeah, yeah. The the one that came out uh, I think okay. last year or this year. Yeah, with with uh against uh after uh all for ones already captured and yeah. uh they're fighting against Whoa, us. you're spoiling it for Ramon here, but uh I'm not yeah. listening, man. I'm over here thinking Fiona and Cake. That's all I'm thinking. No, no, about. well yeah, I mean <laughs> I've been watching Suits on Netflix. You know, I'm like on the third season. It's a show that has something to do I with mean, anime. I it's actually the opposite of, of anime, which is like you wouldn't think about it, but uh, that I would love stuff like that. But I mean, Ro, we did our review episode of um what was it that just uh, one show succession? With- Succession and it's just like Succession and Suits. suits I love, like, I love Suits. It's, I, I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw like, when it when it was on. The, the only thing I want to say real quick about Suits is that Lewis, the character Lewis, dude, he, <laughs> if, he Lewis. Wasn't for, if he wasn't for him, dude, this show would have lost its gas like a long time ago for me. I love me. Lewis. But Lewis is just the best in that show and he without him, there is no Suits. <laughs> That's like when, did this, say. when did this wave on Suits begin? Because I remember my... It, it, uh, it, just, it just came on Netflix recently. That's why. Well, yeah. Was it? Okay, because I know Paletas and you guys all know him pretty well. Um, When he was still working with me, like he was like, dude, like we just started watching suits and i'm like you're watching suits like it just it didn't seem like the right type of show not in like in, in any sense but it's just you know it's like a show about lawyers and then yes recently i forgot where i was listening to like i think it was maybe another podcast and they were talking about the same thing too like the resurgence of suits and maybe it is because of netflix but netflix supposedly has just like so many watch time like compared to it's, everything else right now so it's like i mean it, that makes sense it, 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 like the most it, it, watched it's kind of like show. cobra kai yeah yeah, yeah it's kind of like cobra kai like w- once they went on netflix it got huge but <sighs> but another reason why the writer's strike is happening right now like the people that created this show like they're getting almost like no royalties from like this huge binge from netflix, and it's like, yeah so it's like it's actually perfectly that this is happening because you can spotlight a show like this that nobody cared about it recently recently and all of a sudden now it's like everybody in the world is like watching it and honestly too the the fact that that M- megan marco is that her name the, yeah. the marco she's in it yeah like dude awesome dude like honestly i knew yeah, she was on awesome tv and i thought maybe she had like a small cameo in one episode like the fact that she's consistently throughout the whole show oh yeah you see her, butt, she's a big her body like i'm like dude the queen watches <laughs> these scenes because if, if somebody shows the queen these scenes like of course she was never gonna like her <laughs> 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 I'm at a, Carlos I'm at finding out the truth about the royal dilemma. <laughs> Dude, I'm like so late into it, but uh, I'm a big fan of hers now. Honestly, <laughs> huge fan. <Yeah. laughs> and, and 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 uh, Jessica from the show, she was also in Firefly uh, mm. slash Trinity. Yeah, so now I'm a little jealous of Prince Henry at this point. <laughs> Carlos is still stuck on Meghan Merkel. <laughs> but anyways, I think we were talking about I don't know anime. <laughs> <laughs> sure. just in general so yeah so so yeah. we we at, at some point we're gonna switch gears and start talking about other stuff besides anime because yeah. we, we we are nerds we in more in more stuff besides anime yeah. and 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 be so nerdy we'll talk about non-nerdy stuff and movies like we still got to watch about like what is it uh no hard feelings <laughs> i just want to talk about that movie or blue beetle yeah. uh, that's nerdy dude. oppenheimer nerdy. Okay. yeah we still have to end barbie Oh, yeah, all these things see, we never got to see yeah, all man. those things i think those could all go into like one episode and just like this i mean we're having fun right now we didn't have much to talk about jujutsu and bleach or you know the stuff we did, we did talk about it we're done with it so like let's actually talk about the things that you know we've been watching but yeah man it's uh we I mean we got seven minutes man if you want to like throw it at me <laughs> throw it at me but yeah like it's fun to like talk about these things like no hard feelings i think it was one of those movies that you know i think I, I knew it had good reviews. I knew if I would have paid for it to go, go sit in the movie theater, I would have probably had a fun time. I just, you know, when I saw it at home, I was like, oh, like, you know, obviously regret, but not really because, you know, you got to be selective about where your money goes nowadays. But uh, yeah, it was a really actually fun opportunity to see Jennifer Lawrence in a different kind of way. <laughs> Uh, like naked beating up teenagers on the beach yes no, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I mean if we're gonna take the six minutes that we have left to talk about this movie no yeah like it just in general yeah like i i thought it was a really good movie raul you gotta watch it um definitely cringe worthy and a lot of what, what streaming because... service is it gonna be on i it's gonna be on netflix know, i believe man. on the 22nd so it's gonna come to netflix oh, yeah, a few a days. Of... yeah 
So a lot of this movie, I think, is going to jump in popularity, like Netflix top one, obviously, like right away. Like, it's, it's no a, doubt it's in my heart. Movie. It's a fun movie, cringe topic, uh, but, you know, well, well executed. And the overall concept of the story is not even about, like, Jennifer Lawrence being crazy. It's just about, you know, people who come to certain areas for the summer and then kind of do whatever they want and they leave. And yeah. It was the whole it thing just, about the East Coast, man. It was, it was something, too, that I, I just don't have that experience. So it was really nice to watch for that, too. Dude, and honestly, like, Jen, people hate Jennifer Lawrence. Like, after a while, like, you know, they loved her and then they just turned on her. And I'm glad that she did a movie like this to kind of like, you know, kind of get on people's good side again. Because even myself, I was one of those people that kind of like turned against her because she was doing things like she kept being in the X-Men movies and she was just like bringing them down, you know, especially on the last one. And I'm like, ah, like, you know, clearly there was a reason why, you know, she got taken out like right away in that last movie. But she kept doing roles yeah. and you could say that she her heart wasn't in them. So it kept pissing me off because I'm like, dude, I was rooting for you. Like, I, 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 I liked you. You were, you seemed sweet. You seemed funny. You seemed like somebody that was like fun to see on screen. You had, you have an Oscar. Like, for you all of a sudden to like give all these bad performances, and it's just like I don't know. I mean, I guess people were just waiting for that situation to like really turn on her because I think Mother was the one that people just oh, did yeah. not like at all. Right? I still haven't seen yeah. it. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah. Matthew Broderick is on it too. Like Ferris Bueller. Like that's another character. Yeah, it's another actor. Oh. Sorry, another actor that is just kind of popping up everywhere. Like I was watching Only Murders in the Building, like the newest season. He randomly joined the cast like just i don't know if it's just like a one episode type of thing but it's just like yeah. man what's up with this dude is everywhere now and it's well, funny because i was I just watching him. the honest trailers on ferris bueller and it was just like, bueller. Hey, yeah it was just yeah like, what the hell like what it's maybe they know something we don't know and he's just kind of coming back up it, again and everybody dude, loves with me Potter. as a child it always like because again i think i think ferris bueller's day came out like way before i i don't know if i was even born when it came out Mm -hmm. um so to me when i first saw it he looked so young and then next you know like i see him in godzilla and i'm like dude this was like age like 20 years like what happened like i just saw him like <laughs> like in ferris bueller be like a teenager now i'm seeing him in godzilla he's like a 40 year old like my dad so it's like to me i never got over that so it's like i feel like there is um a lot of his work early on after probably ferris bueller's day off that he did and i just don't have any recollection or haven't seen these things so I got to look a little bit more into his filmography because, again, I know him more. The producers. He did. Yeah, like I've never seen the producers and he's probably yeah. great in it. Cable Guy is my favorite of his. Oh, oh yeah. no, Ferris Bueller, Bueller. Guy. Cable Guy was great. Cable Guy. And then, and then Inspector Gadget, he was in one of those. Oh, like, yeah, I don't know which yeah. one. That was so bad. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, Cable, can... Cable Guy was mine, man. And Cable Guy was my funny one with him. Dude, Godzilla, man. I, I know people. <laughs> hate... I, love, I loved that movie. Dude, dude, people hate Godzilla, and I don't understand why. I mean, I understand why, but I love that movie growing up. Like, I had the VHS, and I would watch it all yeah, the I know. time. And it just reminded me of, like, Jurassic Park. And I it, thought it because was so we didn't cool. know any better. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... I think... No, you know what? I, I think it doesn't hold up. The special effects on Godzilla are probably yeah. terrible at this point. <laughs> Wait, what uh, was he in The Lion King? Who was in The Lion King? Uh, yeah, he's credited for being in The Lion King, and I did not know this. Oh, he's Simba? What? When he's young not Simba? Simba? Like older Simba? No. I know who's Simba, and it's not him. It's it's uh, D Donald Glover. No, no, I'm no, talking no, about no, the, 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 the Lion King, Lion King, like the original. Oh, the <laughs> like, animated? Shut up with your live action Lion King, dude. Good. No. It's not <laughs> live action, it's also animated. Yeah, yeah he's, suppo he's supposedly in that first one, and he's also in the Lion King 2. Like, what the hell? Hmm. Interesting. Huh. I, I don't know that like... he's adult Simba. Yeah. I just know, but uh, uh, Taylor Thomas was the young Simba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. he was because he he's credited in all the uh, Lion King movies. Like, what the heck? Okay, he must have okay. like a recurring role with something. But uh, yeah, dude, like no hard feelings. Again, good fun movie. Um, you know, I don't know if I should be saying this, but I honestly thought it was a little bit more enjoyable and funny than Barbie. But Barbie had layers to it, like a lot of layers to it, like a lot of like this is great. I love the message. But on a funny comedy, like I preferred the Jennifer Lawrence because that was more so, of a, so, taking me back to like American Pie kind of days. So, so you're saying Barbie is a bad movie and no one should no, watch it? No, 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 no. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you know how we should talk about this? We should talk about this. I, I, you're right. We should do one episode, like one podcast episode on like the summer movies. 
and and anything that we saw. What we saw, summer. yeah. When, and whether That's we the... didn't, and whether we all didn't yeah, see it at all, yeah, we yeah, should let's just talk that. about it. Because yeah, I have a lot to say about Barbie, and it's definitely not what you just said about uh, no I, hard feelings being better. I, I have a lot to say about Blue Beetle and Oppenheimer. <laughs> I have a lot I to said, say about Blue Beetle, yeah. too, man. No, I don't want to go on record saying, like, no hard feelings is a better movie. I'm saying no hard feelings <laughs> brought, me the, brought me more laughter, where Barbie, some of the jokes didn't land for me. And I think that was the complaint, you know, when I was hearing a lot of people, the reviews on them. And I told you, I went to a packed movie theater. And I was laughing at jokes that were truly funny and the audience was not getting it. And it was just upsetting me. I'm like, dude, guys, these jokes are funny. Like, why aren't you laughing? Like, like I want to was... laugh out loud. So it was just like that even experience from one of being in a crowd with people that don't understand yeah. like, the jokes like really was upsetting me. <laughs> well, yeah, let, let's do that. Let's, let's just do a show of like the summer, like 2023, like movies, because I have a lot to say, like I said, Blue Beetle and all these and Raul, damn, like I'm so jealous I didn't get to see Oppenheimer in theaters, but yeah. I would love to hear you talk ca- about it. Yeah, yes. and I won't care if you guys do like Blue Beetle spoilers no. at this point. Like, I, so I was a whole five feet away from the screen for Oppenheimer. <laughs> No, I mean, where would I, I mean, I, unless I can rent it. I mean, I can rent it probably for $20. Uh, so I, I can do I, that. Soon, soon. But yeah, let's do that soon. I think I think that would be a fun one. That's going to be like the episodes that I miss, man. Some craziness. Dude. Some and, crazy and, stories. Hey, hey, Carlos, <laughs> l- l- let's talk about it without Ramon whenever he's gone. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and by hey. the way, Matthew Broderick is Simba in all the animated movies. Did not know hmm, that. Interesting. Sorry. That's I should know that. Dude, if anybody made it to like listen to this, like it's a hard <laughs> ask, but if anybody made it to an hour where we for the last fifteen minutes we've been talking about this non bleach because you know you know the thumbnail is gonna be bleach and jitsu kaisen. So if anybody made it for these last eight minutes, t- tell me, like tell me, just tell me like, hey, I really love all that stuff that you were doing after <laughs> the after bleach. Or tell me or or, or, me or or that you hated it. <laughs> or just tell me no just tell me you listen to it like i just want to know if somebody made it all the way over here because i would love to like know who this person is so i can high five them somehow <laughs> but Some yeah digital high fives yes all right man sounds good man i'll talk to you guys soon adios peace <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>